Good evening and welcome to Anupali. This week, we have a special edition of the program that takes us on a tour to the Sufre and Rosa South constituencies. I, along with the power reps for these constituencies and with members of cabinet and government officials, visited the sites of several projects in these constituencies, some ongoing and others about to take off. In both constituencies, we are embarking on housing initiatives to ensure that our most vulnerable citizens are provided with safe, resilient shelter. New housing developments will begin this year in Scotshead, Point Michel, and Eggleston. Other projects, such as a new community centre for Gallio, which will also serve as a hurricane shelter, and the covering of a courtyard for fishermen at Newtown will get on the way this year. It is important for me to get on the field to visit communities around Dominica, not only to observe ongoing projects and explore new prospects for development, but very importantly, to speak with residents, hear the views and concerns, and get the backing of our various initiatives. This people-centered approach has always defined my style of leadership and I look forward to more opportunities to get out in the communities, to meet with the people of Dominica, as together we build our beautiful country. Do enjoy this episode of Anupali as we go one-on-one -on -one with the people of the Sufre and Rosa South constituencies. Visit Scots at first with um, the site for the construction of the residences for the folks in Scots Head. The first phase is 16 homes and um, nine, um, 16 three bedroom homes, standalone homes, and then nine studio apartments for nine individuals in, in that community. Now, that is part of a first phase of a bigger project because 16 plus nine won't solve the problem of the housing situation in Scots Head. But it's a start and it's an important start. Uh, we've had to acquire in excess of seven acres for that development. And we look forward to this being advanced in the next weeks or so. We are at the cusp of signing the agreements with the contractors and to mobilize and to start the construction of the zones. It's a very beautiful site and the constituents are really happy with the site that they have selected. And I'm really excited that we can finally start the first phase of our plans to build resilient homes for the constituents, especially of Scotshead, who have been displaced since Hurricane Maria. They have been very patient and I'm thankful for that. But soon, I hope, um, this year we'll be able to hand the first set of keys, at least 16 homes will be constructed in the first play phase. We plan to do a master plan for the area because, as I said, we acquired four acres of land. So it's a huge undertaking. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to offer lots to other families who want to build their own homes. Um, since after Hurricane Maria, a lot of persons who got displaced down on the, um, the Bayfront, um, <clears throat> then right now living in temporary homes. So I think that is a, a timely project. And um, if you look at the, the view right now, the, the steep are very fortunate. Um, it's almost like they're going to be living in a, a mini resort. Um, but I think they have to be very grateful. I thought the plans are amazing. And we want to thank the government of Dominica for this for this venture, and uh, we know that our people will be very will be appreciate this project very very much. Uh, people are not already excited; it's not even started as yet. But just the clearing of the land alone is, is evidence that this thing will be coming on stream, and we are very very much grateful for that. We know that that's a sacrifice that the government has taken because they realize the importance of, of this project. And um, like you said, in these economic hard times, um, it's, it's unbelievable. It's almost like a miracle that this project has been been undertaken and um, we just want to say a big thank you from all the members of, this, of the village council and the public and environs. We want to say a big thank you to the government of Dominica. Then of course they had the fish with fishermen. They wanted to build a fish landing site uh, to facilitate the hauling of their boats during difficult um, weather and I've given the go-ahead for us to design this and to have it constructed. I was happy to be at the, um, the Sufria constituency where we were able to meet a number of fisher folks. 
and of course they too have their concerns fishing of course is a is the main economic um, activity in that constituency and um, we have given a commitment to ensure that um, a slipway is built uh, so that the, 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 um, the fisher folks can um, secure their vessels in times of disasters and um, of course the, the prime minister has um, given that commitment and if the folks on there are very very happy i mean guys going all the way out sometimes up to um, 30 miles out to, to to really have the catch and they're very excited about that prospect um when hurricane season we don't have area that we can pull our boat and we normally we're using somebody land and the person going to use the land right now so we need a slipway to pull our boat the slip we're going to help very much because right now the insurance resource to four stroke engine every week we have to pull up our boat to service the engine every two weeks and more we have to rinse up the sweet water and stuff like that so that is why normally we need this slip there I'm very happy about it and i want to thank the prime minister the pirate or the government people that came there for asking us to talk to us and then decide they're going to give us something at this at that time And of course, you have the situation of the breaking wall. You know, we spent in excess of $40 million um, building the seawall between Scorsese and Sufria, which is a major investment in the community um, some years ago. But of course, with the Hurricane Maria, there was an impact on uh, a section of the wall about, uh, about 50 meters or so, I've been told. And so this will cost some money, and we have designs for that, and have given the go ahead for us to have this, um, uh, this intervention done because if, if we do not do it now it will end up costing us more money because there will be further damage uh, to the rest of the um, road structure and of course the seawall structure so that has to be done um, going forward. And of course as you know in Sofia we have built a new health centre there to visit the site it's about to open one of the challenges is the delay in the arrival of the equipment and the furniture. Once these things are on island, we will have them placed in and have the residents access to the self center. Since last year, the project was completed and we are waiting to commission that health center sometime this year. Once we receive the equipment, I have received assurance from the Minister of Health that once the equipment is on island, we'll commission this health center, as I said, which is greatly needed by the constituents as they, uh, we are under the Roso Health District and to receive certain services and clinics, the residents have to travel to Roso. So that will eliminate the cost to the residents of traveling to Roso to receive certain healthcare services. So I'm very pleased that we'll be commissioning this health center this year and hopefully in the first quarter of this year. I almost forgot my one of my most favorite villages in Dominica, Galia, which we also visited. And the intention there, among other things, with housing and etc. But one of the main projects for them there is the multi-purpose resource center. And the whole idea behind this is to build a facility that can provide shelter for the residents in, in times of of a, of a storm, and to be used as a as a training center for young people and for senior people as well and a place where meetings can be held and social gatherings can be can be held um, and one of the elements of this is that we intend to use all of the indigenous stones in Galia because Galia has skilled people who can cut the stones you know, almost to perfection and we'll be utilizing them to harvest the stones to shape the stones and also to place the stones so when you look at the building, it will reflect the, the environment in Galio um, and the resources that they have in Galio um, to, to, to enhance uh, the aesthetics of the community, but also the social life of, of Galio. So I, for this project, I am, I am personally overseeing it, even if the parliament is overseeing it, but it, it is something that we have committed to and it is something that's really needed in Galio. So we move to have this done started certainly in 2022 God's really i am pleased that um, work is on the way to see that project come to fruition this year we will first start with the design of the um, building 
Um, we have already commissioned the architect. We had a side visit with the residents of Galio who shared with us their vision for it. PM coming on site was really important yesterday so they could know that the government is serious about the project and committed to delivering on its promise to them. And so it was, the visit was well received in the village of Galio. Um, we met with quite a number of residents. So the vision is that we'll build a multi-purpose center with two floors. The first floor to accommodate gatherings, trainings, and then the upstairs to have offices and uh, maybe culinary arts and other forms of training on the second floor. And also to provide some health services and then an office for administrative work. So um, I'm looking forward to um, receiving the designs um, for that so then we can have further discussions with the residents to finalize and move forward with that plan. But the land has already been acquired by the government. It's about 1.06 acres of land which will be used to build the multipurpose center and to create a playing field so the children can play and have fun. I was happy to be in the Galio area again, an area that is, uh, they produce a lot of um, kosho and um, I'm hoping that we can maybe stimulate some cashew production in that area and, 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 and get those cashews on the shelf. One tin of cashew is almost $23, $24. And if we can get that level of production in, in, in Galio, I think that can um, do a lot. Um, and then we move to Point Michel. We have a commitment to build some 60 homes there as a first phase as well. And there's been a discussion among the leadership and the residents of Point Michel about the, about the playing field vis-a-vis -vis, um, housing lands. So I've asked them to clarify this among themselves and to advise the government on this. Housing is a major challenge in Point Michel, as all of us in Point Michel know. And so we look forward to their addressing this issue so that we can move quickly uh, to have those who are ready. Uh, we, we thought we had all of the land, but today we've been, we've been told that there's still um, some, some disagreements on this. And so uh, at some point I will make a final decision on, on this particular intervention. But the commitment is to build six homes. There are people in Green Valley who have been waiting for some years now. And we're hoping that we can move to build those homes for these people. For our friends here in Green Valley and the wider Point Michel constituency. Again, 16 homes is part of a, of a larger intervention in the Point Michel constituency. I really want to commend the parliament for the Sufra constituency. Clearly, she is in touch with the people and clearly she is aware of the issues confronting the people. And we will be working with her to ensure that she can fulfill uh, her promises and the government's promises to the Sufra constituency. Uh, very wonderful people there, very hardworking people, and we have a duty and obligation to assist them in, in arriving at a better life. We moved to Point Michel, where we visited the site in, in Union Estate for the development of the first phase of our housing development project. As you know, Point Michel is one of the villages severely impacted by Hurricane Maria. We lost over 30 um, residents during that storm. It was really a very difficult period for us and as a result one of the things that came out of it we decided that most of the families who resided near ravines had to be relocated we started with a first phase where 10 homes were constructed and um, 10 families were relocated to a safer place um, they were given resilient homes so in case of a hurricane that the families can remain safely at their homes during a storm so the home itself becomes a hurricane shelter so we are continuing now with the second phase, which is the construction of 16 new homes. And I know that housing is a great demand in the entire constituency. And in Point Michel, we have over 100 families who are still displaced. Um, so I want everyone to be patient. This is the first phase. So some families will benefit, others will have to wait a bit longer. So I still require your understanding and patience in this process, but we have to give the priority to the families that are most at risk and are desperately in need of a home. Well, we targeted uh, 500 homes during this five year period. Um, and that visit today really should demonstrate to the people of Dominica that we're very serious about the housing needs of this country. In fact, today is the 4th of January and we're already at work. 
and we're talking about housing. So for me, it's either going to be a rough year of hard work, or it's going to be a nice relaxing year, you know, where I'll just watch things unfold. But whatever it comes, I'll, I'll, I'll be ready for it. But it just shows you that this government, the fourth day into the new year, we're already on the ground, uh, are visiting people, looking at their needs, especially in housing, and to see how we can, we can fix it. So we have, by eight months, normally it's eight months from the start of construction to handing over the keys. And we're hoping that within the next eight months, we'll be handing over this 40, 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus nine, almost like 50, just over 50, my math not so good, over 50 keys to the residents of Point Michel, Rosa South, and um, Eggleston and Kings Hill. And that is a continuation of what we have been doing, because don't forget, just before the end of the year, uh, we handed over 12 of the World Bank houses and also another 40 of houses built under different um, strategies, which if we have time, we can discuss tonight. So for me personally, this is a very, very wonderful day for me. I know I have my work cut out, uh, my staff at the ministry, the PS and the technicians and the housing managers, we're ready for the challenge. We've been doing this for the last 16 years. So the first stop was a boogie. Um, we have done we've done some work on the playing field, but obviously disasters upon disasters have impacted what we've done. Um, there is some work needs to be done on the playing field to bring it up to a state of play. And we're committed, we have made a promise to the village council and the residents there that we'll make the additional funds available uh, to bring the to the level that they wish for play. And so once the Ministry of Public Works clears um, the design and the final design and quantities, we're ready to roll um, with that playing field and to allow the youngsters in particular to have access to a playing facility. Prime Minister gave a commitment of, of some funds, $70,000, which the, the councillors have said that they needed to complete um, the playing field. So that would be the, the grading of the playing field and also the grassing um, of the playing field. The lighting is already on island and the council have that in their possession. Um, so the, the people of, of Lubia, they deserve that. They have always had their playing field, which was um, destroyed by Hurricane Maria. And I'm happy for them today. From the Lubia, we went to Eggleston, where the government acquired um, a significant number of acres of land, private lands, to, for the housing development. We are also committed to building uh, 16 um, three-bedroom uh, standalone homes. And with these three bedrooms, I should say to you that you have a master bedroom to a master bath. Okay? And I don't think no any will government build in no house with master bedroom, master bath. They give you one bathroom and if you have three bedrooms in there, everybody will share. But we understand the need to enhance people's privacy and, and, and family relationships. So we allow the comfort of this. And we have two bedrooms that will share one bath. And inside the house also you have provision for a laundry. In Dominica, most of us put our, our washing machine on our porch or somewhere outside and we cover it with galvanized sometimes or something with tackle in the nursery. Yeah. Right? And um, but we making provisions for that and of course we have a living room space, a dining room space, and also um, a kitchen. And we are changing designs in some areas where we cannot um, build standalone homes, a lot of space, we won't, but certainly where we do have land, we will be promoting the standalone homes. And one of the reasons why we are moving with standalone homes, the, the bungalow type homes, the, um, is to allow for local contractors from those communities to benefit from the contracts. So when you go to Sufre, so from Scotland, for example, every single person, every single house will be built by a local contractor. You go to to Eggleston, all of the contractors come in the South constituency. What does that what does that do? It builds capacity on the local contractors because there will be serious management and oversight and the management will also assist them in being better at what they do. And it keeps the money in the Rural South constituency, it will keep the money in Scotland and help the local economy. What a way to start twenty twenty two um with our housing project. Um, beginning in Eggleston um, today. 
I know the people of the Rosa South constituency has been waiting for quite a while for housing. And it was about a year ago, I stood up on the road and I pointed to a plot of land. And many people were wondering what's going on. And every how often I would put up that picture on my status. And I whispered in some people's ear that that is where our housing project is going to be. So it, it's going to be a development whereby each and everybody will assist and will be part and parcel of what's going on in Rososov. And that is what we want. Um, we really want to impact the lives of people and change their economic landscape. And I am very grateful for the contractors. I'm happy for them. MMCE will be providing oversight on the project. Take the advice from Mr. Carl and, and his colleagues and do the work to the best of your ability. Many times we hear people say that local contractors don't want to work, um, the job is not of high quality and standard, but we know better. We know that in Dominica and in particularly in the communities of Giro de Leglister, Newton, Bath Estate, our contractors are skilled, they're very good, and they give us high quality work. Um, it's good to see all of you here in our beautiful community of Giro de Leglister. We've waited a long time for this. So I want to say thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. We are very thankful because we've waited a long, for it, a long time for it. Um, and the contractors, I'm hoping that you can work alongside the council and the community on the whole, we are, I am excited, eh? so <laughs> I am really excited, I cannot wait to see this started. So I just want to say thank you again, Mr. Prime Minister and your cabinet, MMC, um, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I can see the design, they are beautiful and modern, which is great for us, and I hope that our people appreciate it. And then we move to uh, the fishing facility in Newtown. The PARP are taking an initiative to imp imp improve uh, the facilities for the fisher folk there and done a pretty good job on their own, in large measure. And they're now asking for cover, which is reasonable. And we will commit to building this cover over, this, over the facility uh, to enhance um, the trade that they're doing um, here in, in, in Newtown. And in addition to this covering, we also will be contracting the services of a local boat builder in, in, in Newtown to help um, build boats for the fishermen here, the young fishermen in Newtown who have indicated um, the desire to enhance their opportunities for employment and looking at government facilitation um, for this. And of course, they are funding some fish aggregating devices, um, additional ones out there. Um, which is a, a, a new source of, um, of, of availability of fish, the fish aggregating device, what we call fats, um, that fishermen use to, to enhance um, the catch. And so we'll be helping them with that. That is one of, of my, my projects, um, the fish caught in Newtown. Um, one of the things I've always said that it, it, fish is a delicate product. And I believe that the the ambience in which you sell fish um, is it has to be of a good one. And the fishermen are now selling fish not on the roadside but in in a good area. And um, what they have complained about is that they need a covering. Currently, um, they're using tents, but the prime minister will give us the commitment um, that we can go ahead and do the covering. Um, for that fish caught, and it will cost in the region of about 90,000 EC. And of course, we're here on the, at the new health center. Uh, we're waiting the furniture and equipment to have it equipped. Again, I really want to commend the efforts of the power up there, who, because for many years we have had great difficulty in um, getting a location for the health center. I think Suki had some land by the bay, he wanted to sell, which is maybe much more than the time. And then we, we wanted to acquire Bobby Frederick's um, um, place at some point, which was for sale for the health center. There was um, some other land at the back of the gas station there, you know, and I've been to all of his areas. We went to Kingsville, you know, we went to Citroën, 
uh, looking for location to build a health center and so forth. Um, but that was not possible. We spoke to Mr. Roll, was for some land there, and there was a no. Um, and, and so we, we really been looking heavily and we wanted to build the health center as far as practically possible in Newtown because that's where the, that's the center of, of things really. And, um, and but the product was able to identify this land and, um, and she took the initiative to engage the landowner. Uh, communicate to the landowner by, by email because the landowner was out of state and, and, and was able to get the landowner to agree to sell the land to us at, at a highly reasonable price, I must say. And here we are today. Um, you know, had Shakira been a nurse, I would name it Shakira Lockett Health Center, you know, um, for, for her efforts in, 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 in this. And, you know, and, and so I really want to say I'm happy for the um, Newtown folks that very soon they will have access to a resilient structure and um, one that will enhance the, the provision of healthcare services uh, to us here in, in Newtown. Uh, we don't have to go to the one in uh, the gardens anymore um, and take this long drive. We're here right here and provide the service. There'll be a, a nurse station there full time, 24 hours, a district nurse um, at the disposal of the residents of Newtown, Kingsville, Citrone, and, and so on. Uh, this health center is absolutely necessary and it is very important to this community. And it is yet again another health center being opened by the Dominican Labour Party administration for the provision of health care to the people at the doorsteps. We know how critical health care can be. We know how important health care is. We know that the availability of health care at close proximity to the people is very critical. And it is one of many, many health centers. As you know, we also visited a new health center in the Sufria constituency, and we are awaiting all of them to be to, to be ready and commissioned for work. And primary health care, as you know, is the main source of health care in Dominica. And if primary health care is strong, it will prevent people from progressing into diseases that would make them go to the secondary area for treatment. So primary health care is on the go and the Newton Health Center is just one of the many health centers that provides that and I'm very happy to be part of it. We are now here at the Newton Health Center and long awaited health center for the people of Newton because they have been subjected um, to using a container at, at Rosso and um, I'm so happy today because in a community with, with so many vulnerable people, um, primary health care is of utmost importance. And um, the health center will be commissioned um, this year. We, we have a little delay with the equipment, um, but nonetheless, um, we, our health center has been constructed. Um, uh, you know, I will thank my colleagues who have been with me and the supporting staff and this outreach we're doing this because that is what representation is about, you know, that the leadership of the country, along with the ministers and the members of parliament, outside of an election, there's no election, nowhere close, you know. Um, so I don't want anybody to start speculating there's going to be election and scary it in Newtown and scary it in Sufri and scary it in... So that's a usual practice of the Labour Party, um, that we, we try as far as possible to stay close to the people. Uh, to hear the concerns, to hear what is good, to hear what is not good, and how we can work together um, to make life better for them. And I say we, the government, the community, residents, because they're the ones who live here, they know the issues better than me. And I need to hear from them, along with the power rep and the ministers, so that we can formulate responses and solutions uh, to their problems and so on. And we're making all of these commitments and we're doing all of these things at a time when um all every country is is grappling with the with the um fallout of COVID-19. Uh, when I visited um the Lube playing field, for example, and I said to them, I give you the assurance that nowhere in the Caribbean, maybe nowhere in the world, and any primary says visiting any playing facility to talk about improving it because that's not a priority for governments across the world. Not because they don't like sports, but because the reality is Finances are tight, um, expenditures going up, and now we have a spike in cases. Um, we're going to spend more money on treating people who have contracted this virus. Um, and, and all fairness to them, um, they acknowledge that as well. You know, so 
human beings are not unreasonable people are not unreasonable creatures i think people understand um, the challenges that the world is going through they understand the challenges that Dominica is going through and i think by and large they're showing gratitude for what this government is doing and has been able to do under trying circumstances under trying circumstances but 2022 i believe is going to be a formidable year for dominica it is going to be exciting you uh we have hope and confidence that it will it will come to pass and we just have to work together um, set aside the usual partisan rhetoric and, and hate and discord and focus on building Dominico, focus on on making lives better for so many people um in this country who deserve and who need the, the support of the government to to get to the next level in life so um this is really um the the mission there thank you